I always think that there's, I mean, there's a lot of hurdles to people getting in motion, but I want to I want to tackle these first. A lot of times, people don't actually undertake something and get it moving until they can see all the steps. Instead of, you know what? I really want to write that book. I just need to figure out how to do the first step. I publish a book, but like got to write something, you got to write, you know, write it all or an outline, a book proposal, you got to find a literary agent. How do I get it up on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the, all the umpteen things that need to occur. The only thing I knew was I wanted to write a book, I figured it out and people do this every day. How hard can it be? Right kind of thing. Might take you longer than you expected, but can you shift your mindset? Get over that hurdle. How about this one? I worry the plan's not good enough. If you fall in love with your plan, I have news for you. You're never going to get anything done. I want you to fall in love with planning, not the plan. The moment you take the first step, you know a lot more than you did before you took the first step. Imagine after 10 steps. Going back to number one, for example, I always say don't let the how drive the what, meaning if I can't see how I'm going to do it, I'm I'm not going to do it. No, the what is the book you want to put out, the metaphoric book. The how is, well, take the first step, figure out what that is. If your first step is I don't know what to do, then go find an author that you know, that could tell you (laughs) kind of thing. So don't worry about the plan. The plan is not going to be perfect. I mean, I want you to do a plan of some kind so you can capture what you're doing and you can look back at your plan and see where I miss and you can add it so you improve it so you do it the next time when we iterate. But you're going to need to make adjustments. I'm going through what will be next month like the 30th iteration of my job search boot camp. And the workshops we're going to do are going to be done unlike any I've ever done before. 30th iteration. Plans are still changing kind of thing. So keep keep that in mind. You're worried you're going to fail versus what a great chance to learn. And I know I'm being prepared. I got news for you. You're going to fail. Okay, you're going to fail. And if you don't trip on the first step, don't be fooled because the crack in the sidewalk is there. So somewhere might be the second step. Might be 30 years from now. Right? So, so, but oh no, but you will. You got to get over that. And then the other thing, right? I, what do I always tell you? You can scale version one. You can't scale version zero. So the sooner you get something up and, 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 and breathing, the sooner you can scale it. And I'm going to use this productivity challenge as a, as, a, um, as a great little case study that I might refer to a, a few times throughout this, this session. But this is just version one. And now I have to look at, well, what am I going to do for subsequent productivity efforts? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But this is just a great, great example. Um, this is something I want you to get comfortable with. Uh, I've got a little quote up. I wrote this one years ago about time being the most often used excuse for people to rationalize why they haven't accomplished something they don't want badly enough. I want you to focus on the things that you want. And one of the easiest ways to get focused is to design to cost where cost is time. So in December... I made the decision to do a productivity training curriculum here for you in March. I knew that January was filled with stuff that was going to keep my attention. Goal setting stuff. I had some job searching stuff. February was, was tangled up with some other stuff, more job searching stuff. And I said in March, that's going to be the first opportunity that I get. And I would like to do it five times initially. I want to do something special for my two-year celebration with these people and that kind of stuff. So I put a stake in the ground. And I said, that's the date. 
Now, what I needed to do was figure out what could I get done in the weeks before I started. Because I wasn't going to be able to work on this until like mid-February kind of thing. And so, let the date drive the scope. I'm going to give you a few different analogies here. But I want, you to, I want you to think about this. And by the way, I want to make sure, because I know some of you follow a lot of what I do, and some of you have seen my goal-setting program and have watched my goal-setting videos and my goal-setting co- um, uh, content. When I say design to cost and put a flag in the ground on the date and then assemble the scope according to what you can get done, I'm talking about being able to come up with a minimum viable product within a specified amount of time so that something is done. The productivity training course is done. I'm not talking about setting goal-based, outcome-based results of what's going to happen as a result of me creating the productivity training. So for example, I might have a goal that says how many people are going to register for this or how many people are gonna enroll in my leadership program. I didn't have that goal. Actually, I won't set that goal because I don't know anything about how anybody's gonna react to productivity training because it's the first time I'm doing it. On April 10th, or more likely April 12th, I'll say to Kara, what happened? Literally, it'll be the first time I look at it, April 12th. That's the Monday after the last session in the version one of this program. How many people joined? How many people stayed? Right? So this is what I mean. There's a difference between setting high goals for yourself after you know what's happening and you've got experience with it. I have no experience with my first productivity training program. I needed a minimum viable product. Get it done. Time makes you focus. That's why you need the date. And let me go to an extreme example here. Uh, I said on March 1st, I need to have the productivity training done. What can I have done? How much of it can I get done? And I could do some of it along the way, and, and I could do some of it each week, and I could do this and that. But if you don't think time makes you focus, if I, now, now let me preface this by saying I hope you all live long lives, but if I told you you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? What would you do? You'd figure out who matters most to you. You'd figure out where they are, call them up, zoom them up, or get to their house, or whatever. You're going to tell me that time doesn't make you focus. So, now that's rather extreme, but why aren't the things that matter to you? You matter to me as leaders, as people in this productivity training, So that's how I make myself focus. I give myself a date. Okay? It makes you focus. It, what? Eliminates distractions. Let's go back to the death example. Are you going to go call up every friend you've ever encountered in in the last 24 hours of your life? No. You going to check social media? No. Right, You're going to get rid of all the noise and you're going to go right to what matters. That's why the date's so important. That's why it's got to center you. It clarifies. It cuts through the stuff and it fends off scope creep. I'm going to get done what I can get done. There's a lot of other stuff I wish I would have had. There's five more modules I wish I would have had. More workbooks and stuff. But it's not part of a minimum viable solution. And if I would have waited and, and done it the other way around and said, what would I like in my first productivity training course? You wouldn't be getting this thing till March 2022, right? So, so I thought, all right, what can I get done by this, by this date and this time? And that's how I'm able to focus. That's how I make sure things get done because I vary the scope, not the deadline, okay? So, um, it's, it's, it's really important that if you want to get something done, someday has a date. Someday has to have a date. Don't ever say someday to me, right? If, when you're talking about something that really matters to you. 
So you gotta put a, a stake in the ground, even if it's loose. All right, so here's what I want you to write on your planner. I want you to write the words on the left side of the page. What are you waiting for? And I want you to use the word you. I don't want you to use the word what am I. I don't want you to use am I. Have you ever thought, you know, when, you get your, when your head gets real busy, have you ever thought, well, you know, I would tell my friend to just do it. Just get over it. Get on with it. I would tell my friend not to worry about that. I would ask my friend why that really matters. It's kind of nonsense. Right, so when, when you think outside of you, I think you think a bit more clearly. So what I do is I have this, I don't know that I would call them a yin and a yang, but whatever, but on the left side of what I do, figuratively, sometimes literally, literally I have what are you waiting for? That's the get in motion part. What are you waiting for to get started? You want it to be 72 and sunny? If I waited for 72 and sunny weather to run, I would never get a run done all year long. And then on the other side of the page, you can write, what's the rush? But that's for a different context. So what am I waiting for to get started? Nothing. But what's my rush as it relates to the results? So what it didn't turn out? What's your rush? Can't you do it again? Can't you try it again? Can't you pay more attention? Can't you step back and take a look at it? Right? So what are you waiting for to create that productivity course? Nothing. What's the rush and why did, you know, thousand people have to join for this? I don't know. We did it with no advertising. Right? There's a balance. Get in motion. Right? And then be patient with your results. What do I tell you? Be impatient with your action and patient with your results. So don't, 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 don't forget this, okay? Now, how do I get to an MVP? Here's what I do. I decide what I want to do. I want to make my leadership training program and membership better. It's in complete alignment with what I want to do and what I want to offer. I got dates I set every month where I show up for you guys, right? You show up, I show up, we have a powwow together, right? So what projects do I want to help you with or do I want to build for you this year? Got a you know, couple of sessions we did in January and February. Did this five banger in March, right? Okay, version one date, March 1st. We're gonna get we're gonna get it done March first. Whatever it is, we're, we're we're showing up March first. We're advertising. We're sending them an email. We're telling them we'll be there, right? And get something done. Had this client one time. It was May of 1999, and I got on an airplane from Chicago, flew to San Francisco, met with these leaders from Sun Microsystems, and they were telling me that they had to get this large scale CRM system in by October 1st. And they told me all the things they wanted and they, you know, my my team was there and my boss was there and they'd sold this large project where there was no way in hell they would get something done by not that scope by October 1st. 1999, right? It's got to be before the millennium. And I looked at the I looked at the the big boss, the client and I said, what's the rush? Like, are, did you promise somebody something by October 1st? He said, yes. I said, then, well, then we'll get something done by October 1st. What would you call a victory? Because this ain't it, right? This is, this is ridiculous. You'll never be able to get this done. Even if we get, gave you everybody in, the, in your company and our company, we couldn't get this done because there's dependencies and this and that. So what's your minimum viable solution? Get something done, whatever it is. Then, I, based on the timing, I have some reasonable sense of how long it will take to get a minimum viable solution done. Then I assess what's the scope going to be. And then I actually assess not just what's the minimum viable solution, I assess what would be one step better. What would be one step better than that? 
and so on, kind of like stretch goals. But you, you assess the scope and the features of whatever your project and your outputs are gonna entail based on the amount of time you are willing to spend to get your first version in motion. And then you do it, right? That's it. That every single thing you've ever seen from me has done that way. I decide I set a date, we design it, we do it. That's it. Every single month, every single Tuesday, every single Thursday, every single Friday, it's always this way. Always this way. And it's on a repeat loop. Now, here's something that I want you to think about um, when you get into actually doing the projects. Uh, a lot of people have difficulty recognizing that whatever is released initially is not the final product. It's not life or death, rarely. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I'm talking to any heart surgeons out there, but you get what I'm saying. If you think of everything in your life as one single unit, my YouTube channel is just one never-ending thing. It's one unit. That's it. The leadership program is one big unit, right? I started at some point in March of uh, 2019, and it's just one big unit that we, that we keep feeding. So when you think of it that way, I want you to think of it in, 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 in different stages and iterate and iterate the stages over and over. So the first thing that I do is I, I plan. So I figure out what's a minimum viable solution, what's version one gonna look like? Productivity training, let's give them five, five sessions, what would I want those five sessions to be, and so on. And I think about um, when I look at uh, large scale projects that I do. So let's humor the project managers here for a second. On the one hand, I would tell you that if I was teaching a project management class, I would tell you that the, the more complicated the project was, the, the larger the inventory of activities that need to occur, when you're planning it initially and you have a thousand steps, if you miss a step and you allocate zero amount of time to getting the step done, that's where the damage is done. That's where delays occur because you didn't account for the activity and you didn't allocate any time in your time frame to do that, okay? But if, if, if I tell you that to tighten your project to make the iterations smaller and more frequent, you have less, uh, your inventory of tasks is smaller, right? There's less tasks. And the likelihood that you're going to miss something outright is going to be almost nil. And if you do miss something that you need to do in your plan, your ability to recover will probably be as simple as just working a couple extra hours to make it happen. That's what happens to me. Sometimes I don't realize that something's gonna break or something, I needed to do something that wasn't on my plan and I didn't have any time allocated for it. But if you got a pretty decent plan, and your time frame is reasonable enough, meaning short enough, you're not gonna be crucified when you miss something. The larger the plan, the greater the test, if you miss those and have no time allocated, that's where, that's where you're gonna get hurt. That's where you're gonna blow your, your time budgets, so to speak. So I'm not, I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about higher velocity pro projects here. Follow me? Okay. Then you act, so you do it. This is what are the actions that I need to take to get version one done the quickest. That's it. I mean, when I talk about the activities, yes, the airplane needs to go through all of its checks. All the wires need to be connected. Everything needs to be verified. Everything needs to be certified. All that good stuff. For most of us, this is about bite-sized, personalized, or small ish work related problems so you get in motion get to the to the uh, v1.0 first and then collect some data now the problem is with version one you're going to have too many variables and i'm going to talk in a, in a few slides or a slide or two about the type of data that i collect and that i want you to collect but the point is if you're going to go to the trouble to actually act 
then you need to go through the trouble if you want to make it better to capture the data because you're going to have to go through a number of iterations because there's likely going to be several variables that you couldn't control all at once. And we'll get specific here in a minute, but you've got to be able to collect the data in order to make an evaluation, which is the next thing that you're going to do. And then there's certain things that you need to pay attention to what's happening. Right. So when I said on April 12th, for those of you that are here with me live, right, I'll look and I'll evaluate. We'll see how many people signed up. When did they sign up? Did the ones who sign up like it enough that they stayed for another month in the program? Right. We'll look through all of that. Then we can make an evaluation. Right. So it's that kind of it's this kind of never ending loop that you want to iterate through. Plan it. Do the action. Make sure you're collecting the data. A lot of people don't actually collect the data and they go by feel. That's a big mistake. You have to have the details. Because as you iterate through things, you want to have less change in the future iterations so that you can make sure that your variables are, are, are constant enough for you to know if you switch something, if you improve something, if you add something or take something away, that you know that actually made the difference. You change three variables, four variables, any of them could have contributed to this. So I want you to, I want you to, think, about, I want you to think about this kind of stuff. How will I iterate this project? Well, what are, I could add more sessions. I could talk to you about how to build self-discipline. Or I could take each one of the five sessions and take it to a deeper level, right? And take it, take it down a notch. We could add more case studies, right? So there's, there's, there's different ways that you could iterate. So you need to think about it and you have to let your data, data tell, you, tell you which way to go.